All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is week three of our poster presentations. And today, I'm going to give you an overview about researching because the next step is you're going to choose your topics and you're going to immediately start researching. I'm going to talk to you specifically how to cite your research. So that means how to build this paper because that is due as part of the assignment for this poster presentation project. And at the same time, I'll talk about building this outline, which you have to need to know for your next week because next week is your first homework assignment. All right, so once you pick your topic, the very first thing that you need to do is you need to ask yourself some questions. Questions such as what, where, why, how, who, you need to know what do I want to talk about. So for example, if your topic is rock music, to go back to there, then you need to make a decision. Do I want to talk about the people of rock music? Do I want to talk about specific bands? Do I want to talk about the history? Do I, because you only have five minutes, you don't have unlimited time, you have to make decisions. You can't just talk about everything. Because either, your, um, you'll have to say it very fast to make it five minutes, so you'll sound like Speedy Gonzalez, like Andre, Andre, Riba, Riba, way by yee ha ha ha. <laughs> or um, you 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 won't be speak you won't be speaking clearly. You'll you'll try to say too much. So you need to make a decision. You really need to answer a couple of these questions for yourself. What am I interested in? What do I think I want to talk about? Now, once you make that decision, the next step is going to be research. You've got to start finding information. Now, of course, the place to get research is the internet, because that's where everything is. But what students usually do, the mistake they make is that they only go for Wikipedia. And I know you can get to Wikipedia, you just put a zero in front of it and boom, it's open. But what I suggest to you is don't just go to Wikipedia. That there are many, many things on the internet. You can go to, you can find books, you can go find ebooks, you can find magazines, you can find magazine articles, you can find journal articles, you can find newspapers. There are so many sources on the internet outside of Wikipedia. If you write a, if you do a poster presentation about your faculties, then you could go to your faculties, go to Tuzla, or go to um, Che Maslak and interview your professors. And that counts as, as um, towards your work cited. So basically, use as many sources as you can. Now, as you guys are finding information, take notes about everything. Every piece of information you read, take really good notes. And what you're doing when you're taking notes is you're feeding both of these documents at the same time. You wanna feed your outline and feed your work cited. And we'll talk in a minute about how to do that, how to cite the information here. But you want to do it at the same time to make it very easy for you because if you build these while you're working, when it's time for you to give the presentation, you only have to push a button, you only have to push print and they will both come out and you go to your presentation, you just give me those papers. But if you wait until later, you will have to look for these resources twice. You'll have to look for them when you're researching and then you have to go back and find them to get them into your um, outline and your work cited. It's so much easier to build them at the same time. Now, for the outline, every time you add a piece of information to the outline, every time you find something and then you type it into your outline, practice doing your whole presentation and time it. So this will help you in a few ways. Number one, it will help you know if you're at five minutes or not. Because remember, you don't have unlimited time, maximum five minutes. 
So if you're practicing your presentation and you find like, oh, I'm at five minutes, you can stop researching unless you need to change something. So as you're practicing your presentation, you might say, hmm, I'm at five minutes, but I don't really like this middle part. So you can take that middle part out and research and put something else in, but you know that it's going to be five minutes. So it helps you with your timing. Every time you practice your presentation, it'll also help you know if you are pronouncing correctly. It'll help with your pronunciation. So, for pronunciation, there are two ways to find pronunciation which are helpful, I think. One is if you go to Google and you write pronounced, write the word pronounced, then a space, and then type the word that you want to pronounce, you will find that somebody has made a recording of that. 99.9% .9 of the time, you'll hear a recording. Usually it's on a YouTube. Now, the thing is with this, I have only heard American English pronunciation. I've never heard any other types of pronunciation. However, there's another site called Forvo, Forvo.com. Now, Forvo.com is not just for English, it's for all languages of the world. So if you're learning German or Japanese, you can also get pronunciation of words here or sentences. But if you go to Forvo.com and you type the word you want to work on pronunciation, it will tell you, yes, four speakers recorded this information. Um, one say Australian woman, one American man, um, two American women. So it tells you if it's an American accent, a British accent, or Australian accent. And you can hear native speakers saying the word. And it's also easy to copy it. You can actually download it very, very easily. So Forvo.com is a great place to help you with your pronunciation. The other thing is when you practice your presentation, but when you add to your outline and then you practice your presentation, you will also know which vocabulary has been, a, has been a problem for you. So if you have to look in the dictionary for vocabulary, then you can be sure that your friends will not understand you when you're speaking. Because if you looked for it, that means that they would have to look for it too. So. As you're doing this, you'll learn, oh, I have to pre-teach this word, or pre-teach these words. And that doesn't count towards your five minutes. You could come up, you could write down words, like for example, last week, if you remember, you remember I taught you frustrated? Yes, and the funny story that went with it? Well, I could, I had to teach you that before I gave the presentation because I used it so much that if I didn't tell you what it meant, you might be frustrated. And so uh, you'll know that when you're practicing, you'll know if I need to pre-teach some vocabulary. So it'll help with your timing, it'll help with your pronunciation, it'll help with your vocabulary, it will also help you with the flow because you want these parts to connect to each other, the parts that you're speaking, you want, to, you want them to connect to each other naturally. And you'll learn, you'll learn how to do that as you practice. If you don't practice, what happens is you come here and you get very nervous and then you know, nothing really connects very well. So it's a way of helping you make it go more naturally. The more you, pr the more you practice something, the more natural it becomes. You know, for me, before I give these presentations, these mini presentations, I practice a lot. I practice about um, five or six times before I give it, and then I practice um, just before I give it. And then now, I've given it so far this presentation. One, two, three, four. This is my seventh time of giving this presentation. So. This data that you're finding, as I told you, you're taking notes all the time, 
you have to cite it. You have to get it into this document here. And so there's a website that I found, bibme.org. If you go to bibme.org and you can take a picture here. No, we're filming. There's a video. Sit somewhere else. You can take a picture of this and send it on WhatsApp. And um, if you scroll down, you can see how to cite different things. So if you've got a book, it says how to cite a book. If you have a magazine, how to cite a magazine. So it's very easy. You just click on it, a book, magazine, newspaper, article, website, whatever you have, you click on that, and it tells you exactly what to do. First, write the last name. Right? Then write the title, then write the date, then give the um, website. So it tells you exactly what to do. So it's very easy. The other thing is your, your work cited has to be in alphabetical order. That means, you know, the, you remember the alphabet song, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Well, think of that. Every, all the A's are first, then the B's, then the C's, then the D's. So it has to be in alphabetical order. That's also very easy. If you, if you type this, if you make this in Excel, in Microsoft Excel, there's a button at the top that you can just push and it al alphabetizes it. So that can also be very easy. So this process of doing your outline and doing your work cited is very easy but it's also very necessary. Now if you notice, here it says how to cite a book in APA. Here's all APA. APA is one way to cite your research. So cite is a verb. Here, work cited, this is verb three. So this is one way to cite your research. I chose APA because in your faculties, when you go to 201, 201 you, is all your research is cited in APA format. And so I want you to make sure that you know how to do it so when you're asked to do it in future semesters, it'll be very easy for you. Also, in most master programs, PhD programs, they ask you to cite your research in APA. When I was at your level, when I was in my first university, um, everything was MLA. But when I wrote my master's thesis, I had to write it in APA. So it's really now the most chosen way of citing your research. So, as you can see, today you're going to choose your, your topic. So you're going to ask yourself some questions to get some ideas of what to research. When you research, you want to research several sources. You don't want to just research in one source. And as you research, you want to, you want to feed these two documents. You want to keep your outline going and keep your work cited going. So thank you very much.